looks a lot like our wheel, just not with the exact detailed geometry here. So we're going to recreate that using the same strategy with the features we use, except we're going to constrain the geometry to measurements we actually took from the wheel. So let's go ahead and get rid of these. So we'll start with this one here. So what we can do, we can see that we want the end of the wheel to actually start at the outer diameter and the same thing for the inner one here. So let's start with that. Let's go in and what we can do is you can see we can still move around that point and we want to grab something here to constrain it to. So we actually can grab the line and you can see it's offering us to coincident or pierce it. So the difference between that Let's take a little interlude here to show the difference between that. So we're back. So we know the difference between Pierce and Coincident. So we could here take these two and Pierce and see the, the constraint um, symbol for Pierce is a bit different. That's because it's kind of a 3D relation, so that one has some orange in it. Now that does work, however, it kind of has two solutions. You can see in the front plane, it is pierced twice by this circle at the bottom and at the top. So we kind of want to be more unambiguous with our catting, just so that later on, if we're changing things, SolidWorks has to go back and check again, rebuild through the tree to create our part. We don't want it to go to the wrong solution by accident. So let's be less ambiguous here. Let's get rid of that. And we need, we need another geometry part to relate here. So let's go into this sketch. And you see, when we edit this sketch now, we're adding sketch three here, which we should rename by the way. Let's call this, let's call this late view references. Let's call this cross section front view. So our sketches are both here. If we go in and try to edit this sketch that's above this one, we see that the front view disappears. We can no longer select things from it. And that's because in SolidWorks, the information is flowing from the top to the bottom in the tree. And even though these sketches right now are independent, these relations, actually they're not yet. Let's get rid of that coincident. get rid of that coincident. So now we can go ahead and let's make this vertical and make it be vertical to the origin. So that this way, the sketch does not rely on any information from So now these two sketches are independent. We can check that by being able to actually move, change the order. So neither of these sketches refer to each other. So we can see that right now, if I edit this one, it's making sure that I can only refer to things above it. If I edit this one, I can choose and reference things to let's say, refer to this line here, 
But if I were to switch their, switch their order, now I can edit this circular sketch and actually add relations with the previous the sketch above it. And you can actually see we coincidented a point there, but they're not in the same place because it coincided to its projection. So in this case, we do want this sketch to be able to refer to this one. So we'll keep it in that order. And we don't want to use the peers. <clears throat> We don't want to use the peers because of that ambiguity. So we'll go back and just add ourselves in here. A line goes upwards and we'll add some points for our intersections here. So we can make coincidence of that one and also coincident to this one. Coincident here. Also coincident to here. Let's make that a construction line. So now we have some points that we can grab in our next sketch here without using peers. So now I can use the coincident, no problem. Coincident from a point to a point. This thing, same thing. So that sets our inner and outer radii. Now this guy here, we, we know that we want it at least horizontal from here, but we're not sure at what, at what uh, width yet. I actually prefer if we just create a line Made it horizontal and made this construction geometry just so that it's a little bit cleaner that way. So we need to know a, yeah, we need to add some more geometrical constraints here. So if we look what we've got here, so one inch for the width of the rim. So we can go ahead and Dimension here to here. So this is half the wheel, so we're going to make this so 0.5 inches. Now we've got this line here um, constrained as well, just not its end point. All this is still unconstrained. So let's go in. We see we've also got. So there is a lip there. So there, there's a housing for the bearing and its diameter is 0.5 inches. So we'll go in here and redo a bit of that to add that, that inner lip there for the bearing surface. So we'll go back and get rid of this. Just delete these two lines and add kind of Feature that we want here. So there we go. And we know that this one here is a 0.5 inch diameter. So we'll do hit that, hit that there. So that works. And we'll add back our width of the rim here. So that works. So let's go to the next measurement that we've got here. So the, the outer diameter of the hub is 0.7 inches. So we'll go back in here. This is the outer diameter of the hub. Uh, 
and here we've got, we need to know the depth of the depth of this cut into the to where the spokes are of the wheel. So we can check it like this on our caliper. So that's a, a 0.375 depth from the wall of the rim to the outer surface of that spoke. So that will be from here to here. That is 0.375. So it's looking good. What have we got next here? We have the inner diameter of the hub, 1.5. So we can go and, oh, we already have that actually. We, uh, we created that here. So that looks like everything's constrained here except for the depth here. I think I actually forgot to measure that. So We'll go ahead and create one. Let's just say it's like, oh, actually the bearing is probably quite a bit thicker than that. The bearing's probably half, maybe three eighths deep also. So that'll be seating for the bearing will sit in here. So everything's constrained here except for the tire. So what can we do with that? I kind of can give it various shapes here. We at least know that the width of the rim is the same. So if we go back here, the width is one inch throughout. So we can at least create that. That doesn't look exactly like the tire does in this picture. Kind of uh, the tires kind of sitting on a bead in the rim, so it kind of bulges out above there. So that's not going to look great if we just use it like that. So let's create a bit of sort of the geometry of what the bead would be like. So that would be something like this maybe. And then we'd have, so when I'm using tangent arc, it automatically kind of wants to be, it's adding a tangent relation here. So it wants something to be tangent to. So we're just going to add a construction line up here for us to create a tangent line off of. So just make this half an inch, just arbitrary. And then definitely the top is going to be tangent because we can see that, I mean, the, the wheel's symmetric, so the center line of the wheel is, is going to be tangent while we mirror this. So we're going to create a tangent arc here, just the bottom. So I'm going to check this relation and it's good that it's becoming tangent to the one we intended it to. So now we can go ahead and play with this until it looks about right. So actually that's not looking great here. So let's actually use a compound tangent curve here. So create lip of the rim there and then we know that this is definitely tangent and we'll sharpen the radius when we get in close to the uh, close to the lip so we can move that around until it has about the right shape so let's not constrain this yet let's go and Exit this sketch and revolve it. So it's not fully constrained. We can see by the minus symbol. I'm going to revolve it by this axis. 
let's just take a look at what it look take a, take a look at what it's doing here. So that kind of looks good the way it's sitting into the lip of the rim, but the lip doesn't look great here. You can see that it should be more round in there. So let's go back, we can go into the sketch. Can actually let's try maybe something like that. That's looking better. Maybe it's gonna be tricky to constrain, so I'll, I'll actually create the fillets in the sketch here. The rest of the fillets we can do outside the sketch as features themselves. So I'll just bring this back and we're going to fillet this. So that would be here. You can choose these two lines and be like that. So that creates the actual sketch geometry of the fillet. And let's go take a look at the picture again. It's kind of round. It goes back in on itself where the tire hits it. Oops, we don't want to keep filleting. So maybe we'll actually have it end there. So it's no longer closed, the sketch, so the feature that it's predicting can't exist anymore. So it doesn't give us that preview anymore. And actually, if we exit the sketch, it'll give us an error if we choose to rebuild. So the revolve is broken here because it's not, the it tells us sketch is open, self-intersecting, or intersects the center line. So. That's pretty normal when you're CADing to have errors, to have features break. You can always go in, you don't have to control Z, control Z until you find where you were before things went wrong. You can go in and fix them. So in this case, we'll go here and it would be an option to coincident them, but there would be a redundant point there. So the option here it gives us is to merge them. And that is not what we want it to look like. So I actually am gonna do control Z there. Let's temporarily just fix this. And now it's telling us that, so there are lines that are over constrained now. So that's also a problem when, when, we're, um, when we're sketching is we want them to be just constrained enough, then they turn black, unconstrained, they're blue. This yellow one here is over constrained by its relations now. So we're just gonna fix it long enough to merge it so that we don't get any surprises. Then unfix it, now everything is working again. And then we will smart dimension to fix things into place. So let's give this point of dimensions, looks fine. And now, This is the only part that is unconstrained here. So these three arcs. So let's go and I think we want this to be, I don't know if we want more than 100 degrees, more than 90 degrees, maybe we do. It kind of looks good like that. So let's go in here and we'll create some construction geometry here allow us to do that. Actually, that is not what we want. We want one goes over here. So let's tell these to be, maybe let's try 120 degrees just to see what it looks like. So 
load. I'd say that looks good enough compared to the compared to the drawing or the picture. So that's good enough for me. We can go back in here and we still need to constrain these guys. So this is a tire. This is kind of freeform, like I mean, you could measure that more accurately if you want to, but this this point is the only thing that's still unconstrained. As soon as we constrain this point, the two arcs become constrained. So just kind of go until where it looks good. So we do want the tire to be at about the same the same uh, width here as the outer face of the ring. If you look at the picture. Actually, it's a little bit inboard. So we can just move it a bit inboard. We can actually, if we wanted to, we could add more construction geometry to constrain that. So I'll just add Vertical. Oops, I did not want to exit. So we want, let's say, this to be 0.1 inches inboard. Oh no, not 0.1, 0.01 inches inboard. And this is already coincident to the tangent arc. We can make it also tangent, and that will. That will constrain that arc. Whatever I do with this point now, the tire will stay will stay at that 0.5 inches minus 0.01 inches there uh, to clear that rim a bit, like in the picture. So that almost does it. It's not showing us the preview anymore because this. To remember to put this as construction, also this guy. So that could rebuild now if we just exit. So we've got that. So now we just need to finish up this constraint here. So I'm not sure exactly where we want that. Definitely not too high, maybe something like this. So let's just arbitrarily, we'll give it an angle from here. Let's see how it looks at 35 degrees. That looks good to me. So that is looking pretty good. So that brings us to now we need to be filleting and we need to cut our holes and do the mirror.